Good day, guys. I hope we are all good. I just came to do a quick explanation on the trade which we just had on Crash 500. So I just want to explain a few things on what we were looking at and what eventually happened. And I also want to touch on how you manage such a setup, especially if you have a bias. So I'm going to remove this, jump on the daily. So on the daily, you will realize that yesterday, the day's candle closed being uh, like an inverted hammer type candle, which was showing signs of a reversal. Then when the day's candle opened today, we started by pushing up, taking out liquidity, and we started creating this week, showing us that we are potentially pushing down. That's where our bias was coming from. So we had a sell bias. Uh, on the four hour, we realized that we had taken out liquidity here. You can see clean sweep of liquidity above this week's highs. And we're anticipating that push down. So again, four hour was giving us uh, the bias. When we came to H1, this is where our morning analysis was based off. Uh, price had broken this order block. And it was actually in motion to break this order block. Again, so we're anticipating a potential retest either to this area or this area here. And again, we're paying attention to whether price is trading below the 30 EMA just to give us uh, confirmation to our sell bias. So initially, I realized that price didn't actually hit the zone I wanted. So we jumped in on the sales soon after I saw this rejection here. We also had a lower high here and an order block, right? So we're selling, we're selling, and we're scaling in as price is pushing down, right? We're anticipating price to push down to at least 45.10 and potentially yesterday's low, right? This was uh, the, the, the target of this particular trade. So what eventually happened is price started to retrace, retrace. They took this high out. I was paying attention to it. Uh, the retrace, retrace, if you notice, I had marked this zone here as well just to see if they're going to reject. So when price gave these candles here now, you can see there's people with stop losses here and there's nothing with price taking you out if you had entered here. So now this is where uh, the explanation comes in. So if you notice on this impulsive move here, if you want to sell, right, I want to make use of uh, the Fibonacci, right? So price dropped, that's an impulsive move. We broke structures, so it's an impulsive move. We have to agree on that. So initially the impulsive move came to here and this is how my Fib was. If you notice the retracement never came back to 38.2, uh, price just started dropping and I sold. So the error or the mistake which comes with selling at this area is we are selling at a point where price can potentially give like a 50% retracement. So if you're selling here, that's why also initially we always say start with one position, monitor how price is moving, then scale it. So what happens is if you enter here, this is at the end of an impulsive move, right? Of course, at that point, we didn't know because we're using this level. But what I eventually, eventually realized is, okay, this impulsive move is just one complete one because we didn't have a deeper retracement. So if this is one complete move, it means any entry taken in this area becomes a late entry into the trade. Why is it a late entry? Because this whole move is already completed and this move can literally retrace to equal highs. So if it does that, it takes you out. It can retrace to 50% uh, retracement. And if it does that, it takes you out. That's the reason the trades which we entered here, most of them, they hit stop loss depending with uh, what risk you had. Uh, some closed here, some closed here, some let it hit stop loss. But uh, again, now if you notice this, if we drag this fib to the bottom of this huge impulsive move, you will notice that this price actually retraced into the 38.2 now. This is where we're supposed to actually start looking for sales. Right. So at this particular point in time, if you're not confident with taking a sell at 38.2, this is a lower high. Uh, this is the highest high. This is a lower high. So as soon as you see a lower high, we call that a peak. We have an order block. Your safe entry is right here. Okay. 
So what happened is, as I was going about my business, I realized, okay, price has created a fresh pattern. Why I call this a fresh pattern is because we had an e initial pattern here for the first leg. Now, this is a new pattern forming. So we're already forgetting about this particular move. We are now focusing on the next setup, which means this is a fresh pattern being created. So from here to yesterday's low, now that was the perfect setup. With the fee being ran from, from the first impulsive move, you notice that price came, created a pin bar again. We are also bouncing off the 50 level. We also have a baseline bounce. In hindsight, I was anticipating also this baseline bounce, although this was a bit of a variation as it came slightly above. But anyways, these are all confluences lining up. So you have <clears throat> TDI giving you a baseline bounce as a confirmation. You That's number one. You've got a pin bar. That's number two. Number three is this H1 order block being retested again. You see this red line here being retested again. That's number three. Number four, you've got the 50 EMA right in that area. Number five, uh, H1 at this point was uh, rejecting the 13 EMA. As you see, the 50 EMA here. So number six, we had a safe entry. Uh, or a break of an order block signifying that if you had entered here, you're correct and you can scale in, right? So this is how you actually supposed to approach this setup. If price takes you out, if you if for any reason you take a trade <clears throat> and you realize that, okay, maybe I made a mistake, this trade was a bit late, maybe you decide to cut loss, uh, just wait for the next pattern to form. But again, you should know that sometimes price will just drop without the pullback that also happens so this is what i mainly wanted to highlight to you guys that if you are looking at a setup the main thing if you notice from this setup is bias we had the daily we had the h4 these two higher time frames were giving us a sell bias both of them h1 was giving us uh the confirmation so for these two they give us the bias then h1 confirms confirmation then m15 usually comes with the let me just write it here usually comes with the execution based on the trading system i use so if you're following our sessions or our lessons this is basically how you are supposed to approach this trade so let's say your your, your trade is taking you out there's nothing wrong with coming back into this trade and recovering whatever you lost so at the same time, you notice that when we were in this drawdown, I was very conscious of that this drawdown, since this was our setup of the day, in such a way that uh, I noticed that, okay, C1, which we had looked at earlier in the day, had a pattern also. We had this price bouncing off a zone here, order block 50 EMA, also a baseline bounce. You can see this is a variation uh, of the baseline bounce. So as soon as I notice this, I advise anyone who's who hasn't traded, advise them to take a sell here. Anyone who had a loss or who was still in a loss on C5, I advise them to hedge against that loss, meaning that you can either decide to close your C5 and take a setup which is playing out to recover some of the loss. Or if your free margin allows you to open the trade, uh, at the same time, then you can still open maybe one or two positions so that as this goes into profit, you are able to hold that loss on uh, C5 as your price uh, approaches the next point of interest for a sell. So basically, that's how you're supposed to approach trading. So these are all some of the things you need to know when you're trading. How do you hedge? What is hedging? How do you hedge a loss? Uh, with a winning trade, how do you manage that running trade if you've got a bias? Uh, and if a trade takes you out, how do you act? Right. So, importance of risk management. Your risk is to be calculated on this first sell in such a way that even if price retraces and you hit a stop loss, you can still come back, take the trade and take profit and you recover your loss here or maybe end the day, maybe a break even, small loss or maybe with a considerable a profit or small profit. So this is what I just wanted to quickly explain to you guys because I know these guys were asking me questions like, um, uh, how do you manage a running trade if it takes you out, especially if you still have the correct bias? So 
do not hesitate to re-enter a trade, especially if the bias is correct. The only thing you need is confluences. If you're scared of an entry, just wait for a safe entry. So again, it's more or less the same pattern. Impulsive move, retracement, continuation. Same applies to C1. We had an impulsive move and a retracement. If we were to run a FIB from this high to this low, uh, what do we have here? You notice that price actually came hit the 32. Uh, this was the rejection candle. Order block there, 50 EMA, TDI. You see all those confluences are lining up. This was a bearish engulfing. All those confluences line up and all you have to do is say, okay, my risk here is what? Uh, eight pips, nine pips. My TP is 30 pips. One is to three, execute the trade. If you want to hold until TP1, that's up to you. If you want to trade based on a risk to reward ratio, like one is to three, one is to two, that's up to you. Uh, if you want to use money, it just depends with how comfortable you are on trading. So whatever you trade, just plan your trade. If you have your confluences, you execute. So this is what I wanted to share. For now, we are now out of this trade. The setup is a success. So we are closing off the day. So for those who also want to understand FIB, again, FIB, we only use the Fibonacci when uh, we are in a trending market. Or if, as long as you are looking at price and you understand that you've, you've got an impulsive move, you are anticipating like a pattern, lower highs, lower lows. You can easily execute here. This entry here, the pattern was there. Yes, there was a lower high in here, but it wasn't too significant. Yes, there was even a sell. One is to two, one is to three. Someone might have sold here and, and exited on the on the 200 EMA. There's also nothing wrong with that. So just know that trading, uh, there's different trading styles. Each trader, each individual has got their own personality. So if you took a sell here and you took profit here, there's literally nothing wrong with that because I believe this... Let me just check. Was it not a 20 pip trade? I think it was. There we go, 21 pips. That's a good trade. Perfect. You risk 5 pips, you make 20. You risk 10 pips, you make 20. That's a risk reward of 1 is to 2. There's nothing wrong with that. But for those who had held, because remember we said we are targeting this level even. Those who held and saw price retrace and take them out. Now this is for you. Execute that setup again. Uh, if you're in here, or wherever you trade, you can simply scale in as soon as your setup shows you that it's a safe entry. So that's what I wanted to explain, guys. I hope this quick session um, was helpful, especially for those trading synthetic indices. This is for you. So basically, this is like your trade management on Crash 500 or basically how to trade Crash 500 on a, on a trending uh, day or on a on price action, which is clear, which you actually understand. So as long as you have good bias, you're good to go. The only thing you need to do is execute. And from a higher time frame, you'll notice that we also had a divergent set up a high here and a higher high here, uh, a high here and a lower high here. That's divergent. Already that's a setup which was forming from the get-go. This is just a bonus of you understanding that, okay, an order block has been broken, an order block has been broken. Even though price retrace, we're still within that sweet spot. We're still in line with our bias and we can execute. So I hope this session was helpful. I think this uh, video will be shared on YouTube. This was specifically for guys in the Telegram group trading boom and crash. This one is for you guys. So you can just take your notes. And from these notes, you can just use them every day. Because remember, we are trading the same pattern day in, day out. It's only a matter of uh, showing up and patience. Uh, waiting for your patterns and confluences to line up before you execute. If you need further information on how to hedge, how to understand price action, order block, FIB, uh, TDI, baseline bounce setups, those are all signature trading. If you need information on those things, if it's something which I don't explain uh, or if it's something which you need more information on, then you just have to join the mentorship. Because all this, you know, it takes time to, to formulate um, an understanding of price action. So as much as I share most of the things for free, if you need a deeper understanding of these things, you guys have to join the mentorship. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be with me. 
but you just have to pick somebody who explains price the best way you understand and that will help you definitely help you in your trading journey so i just thought i should share this um i wish i could have showed you the results but uh now nah, let that pass those in the telegram group if you want to check out our results signals setups or just to follow up on our daily activities you can join our telegram group it's free that's where we share setups that's where we do discussions as well feel free to join and um we'll catch you on the other side enjoy the rest of your day good trading